Venipuncture is one of the most common procedures a doctor has to carry out in the course of his day's work. Patients don't like having venipunctures and are greatly relieved when they're done quickly and expertly. This film shows some of the faults that all too frequently occur and correct technique. Let's first take a look at a doctor at work in his consulting room. He's taking a specimen of blood to send to the path lab and his patient, who hasn't had a venipuncture before, is naturally nervous about it. However, she's happy to find that after all, it's quite painless and soon over, thanks to the professional skill of her doctor. A well-performed venipuncture gives the doctor considerable kudos with his patients. However, it isn't always like this by any means. Here we have a patient who's had many venipunctures before and isn't in the least disturbed at the prospect of having another, although it is his first visit to this particular doctor. Let's see how he fares this time. Oh dear, he won't come back here in a hurry. Now let's see what can go wrong. One very common fault is a bad needle. Only if you magnify the point can you really appreciate the defects. This needle has a blunt point and a blunt cutting edge as well. Here's one with a nasty looking hook on it. Hooks, however small, tear the skin and vein and are particularly painful. This one is hooked in the opposite direction. This needle is not only blunt, but the bevel is too short. It's almost certain to cause hemorrhage or a hematoma. This excessively long bevel may go right through the vein. And now you see a really good needle for venipuncture. Its tip is just as sharp as a scalpel point. The bevel is hollow ground and of medium length and is honed smooth in such a way as to impart a razor sharp cutting edge from the tip to the middle on both sides. Sharp needles will soon be ruined if they're treated like this. When carried in a kidney dish, they should be protected in this way. They will also be ruined if treated like this. Instead of like this. Don't put too many needles into the sterilizer at one time and space them well apart on lint. Another fault is a blocked needle. You may feel sure you're in the vein, but embarrassed to find that the needle is blocked, owing to the fact that it wasn't washed out after its last use. The unfortunate patient has to be punctured again. The syringe and needle should be washed out in cold water or in weak lysol solution if the blood is likely to be infected immediately after use. This time the fault is a leaking syringe which may only yield half the blood you want. This means having another go and the patient won't like that. To avoid this, test your syringes periodically by pressure. This is how not to do it.
Yet another fault which may result in laceration of the vein and a hematoma is changing hands like this. First, be sure you select the correct needle. This is an intradermal needle which is not generally used for venipuncture. These are used for subcutaneous injection. The larger can be fitted to a 2cc syringe when only a small volume of blood is required. This intravenous needle can be fitted to a 5cc syringe. Or to a 10cc. Or in fact, to any size of syringe. Such a needle will allow blood to flow quickly into the syringe. A larger needle can be used on a 20cc syringe if desired. Larger needles are quite painless when really sharp. A good intravenous needle should be not less than 0.9 millimeters in external diameter and about 35 millimeters long. It's of great importance to choose a good vein. These veins in the anticubital fossa are generally the best. They are prominent and usually well fixed by connective tissue. These superficial veins are far too mobile. They tend to slide away from the needle. Here a superficial vein is bound down by connective tissue and this is the puncture site of choice in this arm. Some prefer to use the point of branching as there is less likelihood of sideways movement by the vein. Fat arms are often very difficult. Superficial veins such as these are too small and those suitable for venipuncture lie much deeper. They can only be discovered by careful palpation. Many a vein is missed by not having the arm fully extended or by the patient drawing away. See that the patient is comfortable and extend the arm fully, supporting the elbow on a pad or pillow if necessary. It's important to hold the syringe correctly. Never have your fingers underneath it. Leave a window so that you can see the graduations. Keep your thumb and fingers along the sides. If you hold it in this way, the syringe will be nice and flat on the arm. If you're fortunate enough to have a central syringe service at your disposal, you can insist on airtight syringes and sharp needles, which are supplied already assembled and sterilized. It is essential first to dilate the veins by compressing the arm above the elbow. A cooperative patient can do this himself with the other hand. A sphygma manometer, though rather cumbersome, is the most accurate method as it can be pumped up to just above the diastolic pressure. A simple rubber tube and clip is very convenient. You must, however, be sure that you can easily and quickly release your tourniquet. Clean the skin with a colorless disinfectant such as 70% alcohol. Tense the skin with the thumb of the left hand and push the needle steadily into the middle of the vein. Your movement should be fairly quick through the skin. As you proceed, you will feel a give when you enter the vein. Don't change hands. Pull the piston with your other hand. Keep the syringe perfectly still on the arm to prevent the needle slipping out of the vein. When you have the amount of blood required, release the tourniquet first, then apply a swab, then remove the needle. Before sending the patient away, see that there is no hemorrhage from the site of the puncture. In contrast to the last patient, here is a lady whose arms are not going to be easy for venipuncture. Suitable veins are often quite invisible. 
and these faintly visible ones can be very misleading, being in fact much smaller than they look. Find a good vein by palpation. You do this lightly with the tips of your fingers. When dealing with difficult veins and fat arms, you can only become proficient and confident at venipuncture by constant practice. Of course, venipuncture is not done solely for the purpose of obtaining blood specimens. Many drugs are administered by the intravenous route. Some are highly destructive to tissue if they get outside the vein, Therefore, be sure that the needle is in the vein by withdrawing a small amount of blood into the syringe and release the tourniquet before the injection. An accurate technique is vital on such occasions. Remember then, see your syringe does not leak by testing it in this manner. Choose the right needle and make sure it is razor sharp. Extend the arm fully. Choose a good vein. Hold the syringe correctly and firmly and don't change hands. When you have the amount of blood required, first release the tourniquet, apply a swab and then remove the needle. Apply these principles always and you will have little difficulty with venipuncture.